Thank you for watching the Calvary Briefing on March 10th, 2022. Colin Hansen wrote an article a couple weeks back that I've been thinking of and trying to contemplate. And uh, our elder board has even been talking about some of the issues raised in this particular article. But the title of the article is Discipled by Everyone and No One. And Colin Hansen points out that 22 years ago when we woke up in the morning, the average person in the United States of America had at best 20 sources for news and vital information. Today, the estimate is that the average person who wakes up each morning has 200 million possible sources for news and vital information. 22 years ago, the average pastor had a big advantage over his congregation in terms of theological and spiritual training. Today, everything necessary to train a pastor is available online. Everyone who can hear my voice today and who has access to the internet could take Uh, most classes that pastors take in order to be trained. Hansen writes, compared to 20 years ago, the internet, not the local church, has become the primary place where Christians are formed today. Before their leaders ever speak, church members already know what they believe, and they expect their leaders to conform or else. No wonder So many church leaders feel like they've lost their footing in the last two years. Well, as we think about the internet and the online communities and all of the things that are brought into our lives because of the internet, it is easy to throw rocks at the internet and to point out the bad things. But Colin Hansen wisely reminds us that there was another revolution that changed the world in a positive way. Martin Luther lived through a revolution. But it's interesting that when we mention the name Martin Luther, most of us understand that Martin Luther was key in the Reformation that really still impacts us today. But a century before Martin Luther lived, there was a man by the name of Jan Hus. And Hus had many of the same concerns as Luther. He had many of the same ideas as Luther. He raised some of the same issues as Luther. But Huss was executed as a martyr, and Luther died of natural causes in 1546. What was the difference? One simple thing. A revolution brought on by the printing press. Luther was able to distribute his thoughts and ideas widely because of the revolution of the printing press. Luther seized upon the print revolution of the 16th century. And the world was literally changed forever because of that. Today, we're living through another revolution. We are living through the technological revolution. And it's easy to see the dangers of technology. It's easy to see the dangers of the internet. But it's also interesting to see some of the good that can come. I was listening yesterday to what was happening in Ukraine. And some Americans who wanted to make a difference in Ukraine but didn't know what to do came up with an idea. And so they started to put reservations in and put money into Airbnbs in Kiev. And then they would instant message people about safe places to go and take their families. None of that would have been possible 20 years ago. But with the internet, things like that can happen in a good way to help and protect people. So seeing the bad of the internet and seeing the way that the internet is forming so many people and really discipling people, uh, what should we do? Well, if we shifted everything to an online approach, and if we jumped into the internet, 
completely, that would be a dangerous step. The big danger of the internet and what happens with the internet and what happens when we are discipled by the internet is a complete and total lack of accountability. And so as we look at the online world and as we look at the possibilities, it is important for us to remember that we shouldn't just jump headlong into the internet and move everything that we are online, go to completely online services, online discipleship, online teaching and training. The internet does have positives for us as followers of Christ. When it comes to false teaching, for instance, a false teacher on the internet has his or her words out there on record. They can be examined. They can be explored. They can be refuted. False teachers can be exposed as at no other time in history. As we think of uh, 2 Peter 2.1, we read Peter's words, but false prophets arose among the people just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them bringing upon themselves swift destruction. The internet gives us the opportunity to explore teaching, true and false. And we realize that in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, 14, that Satan, who disguises himself as an angel of light, can easily use the internet in order to lead people astray. Colin Hansen writes, in every revolution, good people suffer from darkness masquerading as light. The best defense or discernment in the digital age is a local church leader submitted to God's Word who knows your name and knows your weaknesses and loves you all the same. We have a great advantage today. We are living in revolutionary times. And at the days of Martin Luther, there were those that were led astray by printed pieces that were false teaching. But there were hundreds and thousands who were given the truth for the very first time in their own language, and they were touched by the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ for the very first time, and they were never the same, and the church has never been the same. Today, as we are living through these revolutionary times, I leave you with two thoughts. Minimize internet contact as your primary source of spiritual input. Secondly, maximize personal contact with other believers at your church.